Hi, I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft, and I'd like to welcome you to this quick Vectric tutorial for beginners to give you a little tip. Something I see all the time with beginners who I'm doing one on one with. And um, so I want to try to help you in something here. I'm going to open up a file I received from somebody. let that open up and so what we're going to be talking about here is toolpaths and why you end up finding yourself with so many toolpaths as you see down here there are two reasons that we get way more toolpaths than we expect so i'm going to walk you through the first one and then i'm going to walk you through this one so the first one, we're just going to talk about this lion here. Now, this is a project I'm working on for a video. It is a very large carve of a lion. It's on a 24-inch by 24-inch uh, board. And I'm going to be demonstrating the 120 V-bit and why you want to have a 120 V-bit. And I'm also going to show you why I bought the long mill in the first place and what this, what this is capable of in a project like this. This is a very large project, 24 by 24, and it carves it in about 12 minutes with a 120 V-bit. So uh, 120 V-bits, just so you know, I sell bits and I wanted to test out the 120 V-bit that I have. And so that project is quite awesome. I've posted it on Facebook. Okay, enough about me. We're going to talk about toolpaths. So when you are a beginner and you're working in the toolpath area, which is this here on the, or the right side of the screen, the whole right side, sometimes you may find yourself with way too many toolpaths down here. What you see down at the bottom here are individual toolpaths. You see this blue part of the lion's face right there. That's what this highlighted blue toolpath is. If I was to uncheck that right there next to it, and then go check on lion main, and you're going to see a whole bunch of other stuff. So these two combined actually create the whole lion's shape of, the, of this whole project. And the entire thing is done with the 120 V-bit. Uh, you'll absolutely want to watch that video. And if I have it made, when I have it made, I'll put a link to the bottom of this video so you can see why you want, uh, why you want a 120 V bit and why I so endorse the long mill CNC router. Okay, anyway, um, so what I see people doing all the time is they get too many tool paths here. And so what they think in the beginning is. Okay, let's just say we want to modify the face a little bit in the tool path, the profile of the face. Now the tools are going to operate. The tendency is to come back up here and select a button that you pressed before to create the tool path. So if I click that tool path, right now the face is selected, and I click this one, profile, and then I just do a little tweak to the tool path. Say I wanted to change the feed rate of the bit. So I'd click edit and I'd change the data here and I'd click OK and then I'd calculate and well, I want to give it a name. So I'd call it Lion's Face, Lion's Face and calculate. Oh, I have to put in a bit. I always put in a bit in the name and calculate. And now you'll see, now I have two lion's faces down here. Why do I have another toolpath down here? It's because I used this, one of these buttons up here to work with that toolpath. What you should be doing, I'm going to delete that one by right-clicking it, hovering over delete, and then hitting delete this. And that got rid of that toolpath I just created. If I want to go fix something in the lion's face, I don't want to hit something up here. I want to come down and work with the toolpath I've already created, which is right there. All I have to do is double click on it, and now back in that toolpath for the lion's face profile, which is this area right here. And I'll make the changes there. So 
One of the reasons you get multiple tool paths down here is because you keep hitting the buttons up here instead of coming in here and doing whatever changes you need to make. That's why we name our tool paths. So, lion's face profile. I'm going to double click it and down at the bottom, I can name the tool path. That way, I'll always know okay, I got the lion's face tool path in here already. So, I don't have to come up here and create something else. Okay, so now we're going to come over to this other drawing that somebody sent me. And it's this pelican vector right there. And you can see that they have gobs and gobs of tool paths. And they all say 3D finish 1, and in parentheses says clear, and then a number. And those numbers start at 1, and they go all the way up to 21. And what that's telling me right off the bat is this person is using 21 tools in a single 3D finishing tool path. Now, I'll show you what I mean. I can select any one of these, and they will all take me into the same tool path because I know that they are, it's the finishing tool path number one, and it says clearance, and it's got a number, and there's consecutive numbers. Now, you'll understand this in a second. I'm just going to double click on any one of these, and right up at the top, We've got this field here where it says tools. So what we're doing here is adding the tools that we want to use for this project. What I see here, though, is a little slide bar right there. And that slide bar is telling me that there are a lot of tools in here because, number one, the slide bar even exists. Uh, there won't, If you only have one or two tools in here that slide bar won't be there but also the slide bar is short so I'm just going to scroll down and there are a bunch of tools in this so we're going to thumb through them we got the end mill 1 8 end mill 1 8 ball nose quarter ball nose quarter ball nose quarter ball nose 8 ball nose 8 8 Eight, 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 eight. Okay, so multiple times in uh, Baldwin's 16th, several times. I'm still hitting down, and then goes down to Baldwin's 132nd. So we don't want all those. What the software is doing is it's calculating tool paths for every single bit in there, even if it's a duplicate bit. So we don't want that. We want to start getting rid of them. We've got an eighth, a sixteenth, and a quarter. We want this to start at the largest bit and go to the smallest bit. So what we're going to do is we're simply going to click remove. Well, why? first of all, why did this person get so many in here? It's because it keeps coming over and hitting the select button there. I'll show you because I'm going to add one by the method that he's using. We're going to look at the end of the list, and we're at the end of the list. This is ball nose 132nd. So I'm just going to say, oh, I want to select a bit. I think I'll select the 60 degree V bit. So I double click it, and now I come up into that list. At the very end, it added a 60 degree V bit. And that's what that person's doing. They keep selecting a bit. What they're not doing is removing the bits as they're making whatever changes they're making. So the first thing we want to do is remove all the bits that we don't need. So we're going to select remove and it's going to delete the one that we have highlighted. So I click remove and that V bit is gone and now it's defaulted back to the top. The next thing is we want the biggest bit first. So we're simply going to come in here and delete the two. We're going to delete the end mill 1 8th, remove. The end mill 16th, remove. And we have ball nose quarter inch three times, so we're going to delete two of them. And then we're going to delete the eighth inch ball nose all the way down until we only have one left. So I'm just going to keep hitting remove until I see a smaller bit. And there it is. There's a sixteenth ball nose. And that's been put in here more than once. So we're going to remove, 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 remove. 
and remove. And then we go to the 132nd ball nose. And you see at this, that slider is now gone. We only have four bits. So one of the things I would recommend on this project, first of all, I'm going to do something that, if you notice, we have a little pop-out tab over here. And when we're in the design area, we have the toolpath pop-out tab over here. So that tab is there for a quick fix. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover over that, and then I'm going to just double-check the job dimensions and see. This is a 24-inch by 12-inch project. Okay. Okay. So what I would be doing is probably sticking with the quarter and the eighth. And I'm going to delete or remove the eighth. I'm also going to remove these because it's going to make this calculating a lot longer. If you want to use the sixteenth and eighth, we'll see about that. Let's see what goes on. Now I'm going to calculate with a quarter inch ball nose and then the eighth inch ball nose. And we're done. So I'm going to run this. So we're going to preview all visible toolpaths. Or all toolpaths. Alright, so that's the 8th. It's done, and that looks pretty darn cool. Very large project. This is 24 inches wide, so it's a cool project. So... Something I want you to take into account here. Uh, when I looked at the job size, I noticed this was one inch thick material. Okay, so look how much material it is taking out here. All right, but we're not going to worry about that right now. What we're worried about is just showing you how to reduce the tool paths. But I will just take you a little bit further on this just so you can understand what's going on. So I got an issue going on here. I got both left and right windows open i don't want that ever so i'm just going to click that blue button to get that one turned off you don't ever want to use both windows open at the same time those tabs that pop up up here are quick fixes you want to use the little blue buttons that are at the top there okay so what we're going to do is we are going to cut this out um when you're doing toolpaths, 3D models, and you're getting models that are this deep, you really want to keep in mind the length of your bit. We're using an eighth inch diameter ball nose end mill, and it's going to have to stick out of that router by at least three quarters of an inch in order to get down into this detail. So if you go smaller, you're going to run into a problem. You're going to break your bit with working it this deep. And I'm going to show you why. I'm going to go to a picture here. This is a 16th diameter down cutting bit. This is one of the ones that I sell. They're great for, for fine detail work. Um, if you're looking for bits, just go to uh, idcwoodcraft.com. And I think I said I give uh, people that come back and repeat, repeat customers, I create permanent discounts for them. So, okay. If you look at this as a 16 diameter down cutting bit. This flute length of that is roughly a quarter of an inch long. And then immediately it goes up to an eighth of an inch long uh, diameter, the shank size. The software thinks that everything is 16th of an inch. And when you're going that deep, so we're just going to say this is the total depth of the cut, way down to here. This bit is trying to cut at the edge of the material. you got that big, tall wall. This area is going to be rubbing on it. It's going to break the bit because the software is trying to get it into the bit diameter, not the shank diameter. Something very important to remember. That'll save you bits if you can remember that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're simply going to finish this off for you, though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split the screens. And we're going to close that toolpath. And then we're going to create a profile toolpath, this one right here. We're going to select it. We're going to select the outer boundary of the pelican, which you can see there. And I'm going to use a quarter inch. We're going to use a quarter inch end mill. 
and we are going to say up in the cut depth z equals z equals which is one inch that means that your one your one inch bit has to extend more than one inch out of the collet because we're going to profile this thing out now i'm simply going to well we're going to name it we're going to call it sign cutout one quarter em or one four em calculate that and we're going to run it preview the tool path oh i might have made a mistake i'm going to go back on the tool path okay so here's here's the deal so if you think i made a mistake i had my settings so the bit will run on the line as opposed to outside the line. So it's actually going to cut into the 3D model, which I don't want. So here's what people do. They end up going back up in here, selecting that again, the profile, and do whatever changes they want to make, and then they hit calculate, and now we've got another profile toolpath. i got one too many. So delete that. Del ah, shoot. All right, control Z will undo what you do. Okay, we delete that last one. We don't come up here and hit these buttons again. We come down here and select the tool path we've already created, which is sign cutout. I'm going to click that, and I need to change this setting to outside the line so it cuts out the sign. And that was my change I needed to make. Let me calculate, and then we're going to run all tool paths. Uh, after a reset. Let's reset that and do that again. And there it is. So there's the pelican sign. Okay, so we fixed that up real quick. Oh, got to get rid of that little guy right there. We fixed up our pelican. We are good to go. So just remember, when you have multiple tool paths, or way too many tool paths is one or two reasons. One is you keep hitting these buttons up here, thinking that you're editing that tool path, whereas you want to double click down here. And the second one is in some of these tool paths, like the finishing tool path right here. I think you do it in a roughing tool path too. No, cancel. And the finishing 3D tool path, which is right here, you click it, you can have multiple bits running that job. And that's what's creating the multiple tool paths. Same thing with uh, things like pocket. You can do the same thing there. I'm clicking the pocket, and I can have multiple bits there as well. So I'm going to cancel that. So I hope that made sense to you. If it did, then give me a thumbs up and a comment. And subscribe to the channel if you're brand new to this stuff. This is uh, some more advanced stuff with the Vectric software, but this is uh, also... Um, that's what I teach, all this stuff here, and I teach you about CNC routers. So this was just a little tip. It took a little bit to explain, a little longer than I expected. However, this is important because I see people, people do it all the time, and I want to save you this frustration. Uh, bits, uh, router bits. If you're looking for router bits, uh, go down below. Go to the idcwoodcraft.com and to the store and repeat customers they get permanent discounts permanent discounts i create special codes just for them so if you keep coming back I, that's the way i thank you all right i'm garrett with idc woodcraft this video is helpful give me a thumbs up and i hope you have a great day and i will talk to you next time watch for that lion video it's very 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 cool to watch that thing cut